Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So let us get on to the main body of the course and let me start with the first chapter on force systems. Idealization is a crucial step in engineering approach for the purpose of analysis. Why do we do that? This is because actual behavior of systems are generally complex. Consideration of all features is difficult or impossible in many cases. So, this is very, very important. You have to look at what is the phenomena that you want to analyze. Depending on the context, you have to make an appropriate approximation. So, when I have a physical system, I extract the essence of it by a mathematical model. And what is a mathematical model? We choose a mathematical model such that it is simple to analyze, yet exhibits the phenomena under consideration. So, the challenge lies in how to arrive at a mathematical model for a given physical system. And how are you sure that whatever the mathematical model I have taken is good enough for the given application? The only way is you verify it based on experimentation. So, experimentation is the ultimate key to verify a given mathematical model. So, you have to look at all physical systems are generally nonlinear. We try to model it as linear for the purpose of analysis. Otherwise, the problem becomes too complex to analyze. See, if you can look at cosmology, they assume that mass is uniformly distributed, whereas you see there is a large distance between earth and the moon and earth and the sun, there is nothing is available, yet you make an idealization, mass is uniformly distributed. This may be good to start with when you want to analyze certain aspects of cosmology. On the other hand, if you look at an atom, which is at a very, very small scale, you have a nucleus and an electron cloud that are again separated. There the approximations would be different. So, depending on a given physical situation and length scales, certain approximations are acceptable for a given application. You may ask a question, why not I encompass all the physical features? Though it is desirable from a first look, it may be extremely difficult to implement. So, the way to solve a given problem is idealize it appropriately, so that you can solve the problem based on mathematics, yet retain the essence of its physical behavior. And that is how we have to attempt solving any given physical problem. And one of the basic idealizations used in mechanics is consider the body as rigid. And we have already seen in the previous class what is the actual definition of a rigid body. And the definition says a rigid body is one in which all particles remain at fixed distances from each other irrespective of the forces that act on the body. In essence, it does not deform under the action of forces. Is it true? Not strictly true in many instances, but it is a very powerful idealization to get started. And fortunately, in this course, you will only come across rigid bodies. 
This idealization is used both in the study of statics as well as dynamics. And you cannot use this idealization indiscriminately, you have to be very careful, fine. And what you will have to notice is, we idealize physical systems as well as physical actions. When you say a body is rigid, you are idealizing the physical system. And we will also represent a force by a simple vector indicating it is a concentrated force. Concentrated force is again an abstraction. It goes with rigid body ide idealization. You cannot think of a concentrated force without assuming the body as rigid because in reality all bodies deform. You will only have a distributed force whenever there is a force interaction. If you want to accommodate that in your analysis, you will take years to solve a problem or for some instances you may not even have a first level solution. And what is the concept of a force? You find a person is uh, pulling something in the field and another one is a footballer is hitting the ball. So, you have some kind of an interaction takes between the footballer's foot and the ball. Now, we would like to do the analysis. How do I get started with the analysis? It is a very simple way of describing complex physical interactions between bodies. What happens physically? You model it as a force. And what is the effect of this force? The force changes or tends to change the motion of the body acted on. In order to understand it very clearly, I have taken the example of a footballer because you could see what happens to the ball. And you should be trained in uh, handling the football so that uh, you hit a goal ok. And what is it characterized by? Force is characterized by point of application, I have a generic body here, I could have multiple points where there could be force and when I say a force, it is characterized by its magnitude as well as a direction. So, when you have a quantity which has a magnitude and direction, how will you label that? You can label that as a vector provided it also satisfies the commutative law. If it does not satisfy the commutative law, it cannot become a vector. We will see later finite rotation does not come under the purview of a vectorial quantity, whereas infinitesimal rotation can be shown as a vector quantity. So, I could represent the force by a line like this showing the magnitude and as well as the direction. So, it could be concentrated or a distributed force like this. I have already told you in reality whenever there is the interaction of one body with the other, it will always be distributed. But in many instances to make our life simple, we will indicate this by the resultant and show that as a concentrated force. Concentrated force is also an abstraction, goes hand in hand with rigid body idealization. From Newton's third law of motion, force always exists in pairs. I cannot have just one force indicated like this, for which I have to look at what is the Newton's third law. For every action there is an equal and opposite action, I have just shown two bodies uh, 1 and 2. So, the body 1 will exert a force on 2, body 2 will exert a force on 1 and I could show them as vectors like this F 1 2 and F 2 1. So, when I say force it indicates this pair 
and they are equal and opposite very obvious okay and you should also remember and understand it very clearly action and reaction forces always act on different objects they do not act on the same object and what kind of force interactions you can come across interactions can be between systems in direct contact or those which are physically separated so i have a rail wheel on a rails and there is a direct physical contact between the wheel and the rail and how do i represent this interaction i separate these two bodies and i have a force f1 acting on uh, the wheel and f2 acting on the rails this is by direct contact i would like you to make a sketch and then put it these concepts will look very simple and too obvious but your notes should be complete fine because we have to build a strong foundation i can also think of an airplane uh, flying it does have an interaction between the earth there is no direct physical contact and that is why gravitation was so difficult to comprehend so whenever you are going to draw a free body diagram you will have to look at force that happen in direct contact and force interaction that act without a direct contact we would see them as surface forces and body forces it has become customary to apply the term force indiscriminately to either the pair f1 f2 or to the single vectors f1 or f2 separately so both the usages are seen and we simply represent f1 as a force and be done with it and what is the effect of these forces see i have an ordinary screen and i draw a line as a vector i have not shown what would happen to the body suppose i use the facilities of animation and try to show you if i put a force on a body what would happen to it we would also see that uh, the next slide okay i have a force f2 acting on this what would happen to this it would translate fine you are not having a smart screen which understand mechanics and when you make a drawing you put a force and it shows what is the motion some of you should develop that for uh, google because they are making all uh, new developments with artificial intelligence you can also make a smart screen which understands mechanics unless this force is resisted by the supports which develop reactions r1 and r2 the rails will not remain in that place so in general the effect of a force on a body is to produce a combination of translation and rotation motion here i have cleverly taken an example where this force f2 passes through the center of gravity of the object so when i apply the force it has only linear translation and you could feel this force if somebody pushes you depending on where he puts his hand on your chest if it is at the center you will translate if it is on one of the edges you would translate as well as tend to rotate but you might resist and then stand that is a different issue but if you allow yourself to be acted by the force you should feel any force that acts on a body in general produces a translation and a rotation in exceptional cases you may have only rotation or you may have only translation 
but generic effect is combination of translation and rotation. And in the case of an aircraft what happens? Unless the earth exerts a force, the aircraft would fly off from the earth. Okay. So, it follows a particular trajectory and let us also understand what is the unit of a force. Unit of a force is given the name in honor of Newton, you call it as a Newton. A Newton is defined as the force which gives an acceleration of 1 meters per second square to a mass of 1 kilogram and it is a very nice portrait of uh, Newton drawn in 1689. We have already learned something about Newton, we have some more uh, data he is an English physicist, mathematician, astronomer, philosopher and theologian. I also find these dates are different. See, if you go to history, scientific historians, you find some dispute on some of these dates. The earlier slide I had this as 1642, it shows as 1643. And undoubtedly, he was one of the most influential scientists and people in human history. His work laid the foundation of most of classical mechanics, also built the first practical telescope. Observations are very, very important that is what I said, you have a mathematical model, how do you verify the mathematical model? Only based on experimentation and in those days their first choice was to look at stars and find out predict their orbits and then verify their understanding of mechanics. Okay. And he is also credited in developing differential and integral calculus along with Leibniz. And another subtle concept of force is transmissibility of force, which we will be repeatedly using in this course. There is a justification. Principle of transmissibility states that the external effects of the force are independent of the point of application of the force along its line of action. What you have to pay attention is external effects, we are not talking about internal effects. Internal effects would be different, but external effects remain unaltered if I move the force along the line of action and I have a nice animation to show this, I have a force acting on this. Now, let me have a body with this force. Now, I make the board as smart, it understand mechanics. Because of the force, the body will not remain at rest, it will move and I have taken a snapshot up to this point. Okay. Now, what I do is, I move this force to the rear of the body, which I can do easily. And I look at what will happen to this body, when I apply the force, what will happen to this body? This body also will move forward. So, what do you find here? I can move the body by pulling or I can also move the body by pushing. It does not make a difference, it is a very, very useful principle that we will repeatedly use when we have a force system to be simplified and we have already idealized the body to be rigid. This concept also goes with rigid body idealization. Now, let us look at what kind of an internal effect possible. Now, I do not have one force, but I have uh, another force to balance it. And this is like you know pulling the body, so the body is under tension. If I move them along the line of action, what happens? The body is under compression. And in both instances, what happens? Object is at rest, that is the external effect. We have taken the body to be rigid. So, the distance between the particle do not vary, in one case I apply tension, in another case I apply compression, the external effect is same. 
and suppose I make the body deformable and visualize what could happen to the body, a rigid body will remain like this. If the body is deformable, you will find when I apply tension, it will elongate like this. When I apply compression, it would get compressed from its original dimensions. Even though the internal effect is different, the shape of a rigid body will not change by definition. Look at the word definition. In physical reality, it does happen, it does change shape, maybe minutely. If you make a very high magnification, you will see. If my interest is to find out the external forces, this approximation is a convenient way to carry on with the analysis. And uh, we have also seen that force is a sliding vector that should be used with care, that is what is emphasized and it slides along the line of action, that is what you see here. Force is a vector but we also qualify that force is a sliding vector and this has to be used judiciously when you are looking at the external effects of the force. So, what you learn is force is a sliding vector and what are the classification of force systems? If you understand different force systems, then you can easily find out the resultant based on its properties. And one of the simplest uh, force system you can think of is a concurrent force system. Action lines of all these forces meet at a point. And I also use this to introduce certain uh, engineering concepts. Soon we are going to learn what are known as trusses. And this is how you will have a joint in a truss, make a neat sketch of it. And this is a classic example where you have a concurrent force system. What you have this as a plate is known as a gusset plate on which the members forming the truss are connected. They have to be connected in a manner that it forms a concurrent force system. Only then you can analyze the structure as a truss that we will see later. When I have these members, these members may be subjected to compression or tension and if you find out what is the line of action of these forces, they would meet at a point or in other words, when you are constructing a truss and connecting the members forming the truss to a gusset plate, you must ensure that the line of action of these forces pass through a point, it should not be offset. If it is offset, it is going to disturb the idealization that you would model it for a truss. I would in addition also have a moment which we do not want to have. And it is very clear from this uh, diagram, you can also have a system which is concurrent as well as coplanar. All forces lie in the same plane and which you could see very easily in the case of a gusset plate and make a neat uh, sketch on this and you are in the first semester, you know if you are exposed to engineering drawing, one of the first training you are given is how to sketch. You may not become an artist, but you should know how to sketch physical systems from an engineering perspective and this is an uh, isometric view of the system for you to get the details, try your hand on it to the extent possible. Then I can also have a system which is in general non-concurrent, action lines do not intersect at a common point. I have a tall mast and you find a line is connecting this and this is called a guy wire. See if you look at any 
transmitting tower for for example radio transmitting tower if you find it will be a thin column and they will anchor it in its place by steel wires they are called guy wires to take care of the wind loads and the tension would be adjusted by a turn buckle at one of the ends and this is a system which has forces acting on the guy wire there is a weight acting on this they do not meet at a point they are very general and i have also replaced what is the kind of interaction by a system of forces soon we will learn how to idealize supports focus now here is we have idealized the body as rigid then we are trying to understand different force systems in the process i show you certain idealizations indirectly but we will also have a formal discussion on how do i idealize a wire connected to a structure or how do i analyze a fixed end that we would see sooner and you can also see the force system is non coplanar the forces do not lie on the same plane so it's very general i can have another force system where the forces are collinear see you can make any arbitrary shape that is convenient to you the important point here is whatever the force acting on the body lies on a particular line of interest i have force f1 f2 and f3 acting at different uh, places and i could also have another force system where action lines of the forces are parallel you may ask where this kind of a force system can come into play i have a simple example and the simple example is like this i have a member with rollers on two ends on a floor i have a pin joint here and i have a wire connected to this a sort of a rope and i go and pull the rope that's what i'm going to do when i pull the rope i would draw the free body diagram of uh, this member this roller is lifted from the floor this roller interacts with the floor that interaction is replaced by a concentrated force and the interaction of the rope is put as a force like this and weight of the object is acting downwards like this this forms a parallel force system so you could have in applications systems having parallel forces collinear forces concurrent forces and non concurrent forces they can be coplanar or non coplanar all these combinations are possible once we have looked at the force system we would like to simplify them okay the process of reducing a force system to an equivalent and simplest force system which has the same external effect that's what you have to underline we are only looking at external effects on the body as the original force system is called composition for us to do this we would use the property of the force we have seen transmissibility of a force once i move the force to a convenient point i could find the resultant by using parallelogram law of vector addition vector addition it is put as addition here please correct it the resultant of two external forces have the same effect on the body as the original force system that's a key point when i have multiple force interactions 
reduce local interactions by simpler force system is desirable to analyze the body. For me to reduce that I use the concept of composition of forces which you all know indirectly in your earlier learning. We are only revisiting the same old concept so that you do not make a mistake in future. I can have a body like this, I have forces F1 and F2 acting on it and we have also shown what is the line of action and these two line of action intersect at point P and if I have to find out the resultant, it is easier for me to move these forces to the point P. I use the concept of transmissibility of force and then take a resultant, very simple which you have done many number of times in your earlier learning, but it is better to recollect that and associate that you have been able to do this because you are looking at the external effects number one and you are employing the property of transmissibility of force. You may not have paid attention on transmissibility of force in your earlier learning by road practice you would simply move and then take a resultant. Now you have a principle behind that. I have a resultant, this has the same effect as the individual forces. Both these systems have the same external effect on the body. Once you have looked at composition, you should also look at resolution of forces because we need both tricks depending on what is the problem on hand I would do resolution or I will do composition. Resolution is reverse of composition, so I get the force into the components. So the process of finding two components of a force which will have the same external effect on a body as the force itself is known as a resolution of a force. Here I have put two components because it is easy to look at two dimensional analysis first. If I do a three dimensional analysis then I should get three components. It is useful in the study of mechanics. While dealing with Cartesian coordinates the most common two dimensional resolution of a force is the resolution into rectangular components in x and y axis. You have different coordinate system, I have polar coordinate system, I have NT coordinate system. So, depending on which coordinate system you are looking at, we would like to see the components and that is known as resolution of forces. I have taken a Cartesian coordinate system, I have a force F, all this is very well known to you. But for the purpose of completeness, let me list out the steps. It is oriented at angle theta, more of recollection of your early learning. I could write the force in terms of the x component and y component. I have f x i and f y j, where i and j are the unit vectors in these directions. So, I have this uh, force magnitude f x and f y, then I can write many of this what is f x, f x is nothing but f cos theta and what is angle theta it is f y by f x and what is the magnitude of the force, what are the direction cosines of this force, I can put them as L, M and N and what is the unit vector representing the force, I could put that as E f. L i plus m j plus n k all this is taught to you earlier ok, we are just having a recapitulation and you can also do a simple homework if you want to do this. I have a hook which is having a force, two forces at 30 and 60 degrees, find out the resultant. I am not going to solve it just for you to have a some practice. I had told you earlier you have forces that happen when two bodies interact directly and there are also forces that act at a distance. 
we could classify them as body and surface forces. And what are body forces and what are surface forces? By definition, body forces act on each volume element of the body. And one of the commonest example of body force is the force due to gravitation and you call that as a weight. Okay. I could also have this interaction from other sources, it could be from magnetic field, electric field or even centrifugal field. And one of the very important aspects when we draw the free body diagram later, you must consciously account for the body force interaction. There could be mistakes if you do not accommodate this because there is no direct physical contact. And this is what is uh, explained again here, the force of earth on an object at or near the surface is called the weight of the object. On the other hand, surface forces act on each surface element of the body and is exerted by direct mechanical contact. So, when you draw the free body diagram, by definition you cut from the surroundings and replace the interaction with the surroundings by forces, you draw the free body diagram, you will normally not miss the surface forces, but body forces you may miss. But cleverly what we will do is in many engineering applications involving mechanical and aerospace, the effect of weight is usually neglected to make our life simple. On the other hand, if I have to analyze a civil structure, for example, if I have to analyze the beam, it is so heavy, I cannot neglect the weight of the beam in analysis of civil structures. So, what we do is, we do idealizations very cleverly to make our life simple and mind you, the solution you get is not exact, it is always approximate good enough for a given application, that is the way you have to look at it. And one of the body forces that you can think of is the attraction of uh, gravity, you see the apple falling and you have in this electrical charge, so the electron beam uh, gets deflected depending on the charge, that is again a body force and you have already seen a rotating platform, when you sit and uh, enjoy the merry go round, you do ex feel the force of uh, centrifugal effect and they are all body forces. Particularly when you are analyzing a turbine blade rotating at a very high speed, you have to take into account the effect of centrifugal effects in your analysis. If you do not do that, your results will be far away from your experimentation. And when we go to surface forces, it is very clear the direct mechanical contact is very clear. And we will also look at when I have a distributed force, I said all bodies are deformable. In general, you have any force interaction as only a distribution. But there are also instances where we had seen parallel force system. So, we have to find out the composition of it, fine. That is what we will look at it now. A distributed force could be reduced to a single equivalent force which would have the same overall effect at points away from the region of application. This is again you have to keep note of which engineers use. When the body deforms at the actual interaction, what happens physically, what happens in our mathematical model can be different. Leaving those points of application away from the point of application, 
if I have the four systems statically equivalent, it will have the same external effect. That is very, very important. Representation of distributed forces by means of a concentrated force acting at specific points is actually an abstraction justified only because it greatly simplifies the analysis. And I have an example which shows uh, a cantilever beam. See, I am also blurting out uh, engineering terminologies. So, the idea is when we take up beams, you understand what is a cantilever. It is better to get those jargons to start with. And one simple representation is this cantilever is subjected to a concentrated force at the end. How do I get this concentrated force physically? There could be multiple ways to exert this force. It is a very nice example which brings into focus how to comprehend a physical system fit enough for analysis. One of the ways of applying this force could be, I could have a pin inserted into a hole at this point. I look at the front view here, I look at the side view, I have a pin running through the hole, I have a fork, on the fork I could have a weighing pan and then put some weight there and if I analyze only the fork, I could replace this as a uniformly distributed force and I would have interaction of a pin with the hole on this member, fine. Let me show this. What I would do is, I would pause an imaginary plane that cut across this member. What way would I see the interaction between the pin and the hole? I would have a clearance which is not visible in a small diagram, I will magnify it. I have a clearance and the pin would be resting on the hole like this. And if you really look at what is the kind of interaction here, the force would be distributed. And if you go for higher studies, you will learn what is known as contact stress that also specifies what kind of uh, distribution is there. This distribution is uh, elliptical and you idealize this as a Hertzian contact, I would in fact have a distribution like this. Imagine if I have a body which has interaction with surrounding, each one of these interaction is so complex. If I want to retain all of them and try to do the analysis, it will be too difficult to handle. I would in fact replace this by a simpler force system, by a concentrated force. I can find out the resultant, I simply replace it as a concentrated force. And we have already seen, I have put an imaginary plane passing through the member. I have looked at what happens at that plane. Physically, the pin is occupying a finite distance. So, the same thing would get replicated at each one of the planes. Let us see how it happens. So, I have shown it like this. When I replicate that, I would have a parallel force system that would be existing between the pin and the hole. And by composition, I can replace the parallel force by its resultant and by concept of transmissibility of force, I can move this force to this end. So, what you are seeing is in a simple picture, you put a concentrated load, it is not actually that simple. If you really look at a physical equivalence of it, many interactions are simplified and you have used the concept of transmissibility of force, composition of force and then replaced it by a single concentrated force to represent this complex interaction. We have now looked at for the 
surface force, we would also look at the body force. By definition, gravity acts on every volume element of the body. Okay. And that is where you find the mass center and then you replace it by the weight. And you have to see it with a caution when the magnitude of weight is much smaller than the applied force, it is neglected which simplifies calculation in complex real life problems which we usually do in many of the mechanical and aerospace systems, not in civil engineering. Okay. And we will also see one more concept, we have been looking at apple falling, apple falling and we also show forces which has a magnitude by length of the vector. How these forces are applied? It is a very, very important aspect. You know, if the apple is falling like this, we are not going to analyze it in our course because what happens? At time t0, there was no force. At time t just after that, you have a full magnitude of force. We are not going to analyze such problems. Whenever we say that there is a force, we always perceive that force has been applied gradually. So, in this course, unless otherwise stated, the forces are assumed to be applied gradually for mathematical analysis. If I have an force which is having an impact, the approach has to be different. For convenience, we show that as a vector, we keep our eyes closed how these forces are actually applied. I had shown a nice example, when there is a concentrated force on a cantilever, it is not that simple. Physical appreciation of this requires multiple elements, multiple force interactions and bodies are also deformable. We make it as rigid for analysis purpose, reduce the force into a concentrated force and do the analysis of the problem. So, in this uh, class, we have looked at uh, in broad perspective what is the concept of a force and we have learnt transmissibility of force, we have also looked at force is a sliding vector and we said that we would idealize the physical interaction, physical body as rigid for the purpose of analysis and I also pointed out a good engineer makes very intelligent approximations. Without approximations, there is no engineering. You are a good engineer if you are able to solve a practical problem with the essential features necessary for the given application. Thank you.